Hi, this is OK Fixer, and this is Volkswagen engine parts hanging from the fence power wash. an hour. If there's a bigger, more fantastic hillbilly goat screw, I don't know what it is. You spray that stuff really close and all the crap that's on the you're trying to get off just comes all back on you. So I'm just speckled with this stuff. It's like it's tar or something. It's been baked on for, for so long. It's terrible. The um, heat riser tube in the intake is plugged up also so I'm going to have to look at that I have another manifold I might use but it does have a hole in it I'll have to weld that up probably if I'm going to use it or braze it put a patch on it but the heat riser tube is open so regardless I have to open that up. I'll have to weld it back up. If the heat riser tube's open, gee, I might as well use the other one. A lot of people might be asking, why do you want to use this case for if it's got all these problems? Well, I realize I have another, a new case, yeah. But that case is one of those Autolina cases and the fan shroud doesn't fit it right you have to cut it down uh, when I put it together I thought I did it right and it makes this whoop 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 noise which I think is the cam and the crank gear in, re in their relation that means the bores for the cam and the crank are either too close or too far away so I mean if I have to I'll use it and we'll see what happens but I think, uh, I think the parameters in this are going to be so much better, even if I have to repair it. So that's why I want to try to make this work. We'll take this apart, and what we'll do is we'll clean the block up a little bit. We'll put the bearings on the crank, and we'll put the crank in it, and see if the new bearings walk in that. We'll examine the old bearings also to see if they're captain obvious why they're walking and if they don't walk after I do that 
I'll repair the studs and, and we'll just go on. Remember, this is only making 53 horsepower. So, you know, it's not going to be a 200 horsepower engine. So, you know, I think I can get away with things that I don't want to say are marginal, but, you know, not, I'm not like I'm trying to make a lot of horsepower. Okay. Also, some people might have thought, well, you put too much, too much torque on that head. No, you know, you're going to warp it or something. No, if you torque them, six more pounds isn't going to hurt, hurt much. Now, if you put six more pounds on it and then ran it and it got hot and cold, that might be uh, a little different story. But I didn't run it. I just wanted to see if the studs would take... take the torque. This is coming apart pretty easy because it's been apart before. Now I'm going to drop all the washers all over the floor. Ha! What you want to do is you want to get in here in these fins and pry real good. No. <laughs> that wasn't anything breaking, that was just my screwdriver slipping off the slipping off the shaft. We might want to take these washers off, see if I can get them off. I don't see any cracks. That might be one. It looks like a crack right there. Maybe it's not. I guess it's not. They usually crack right there, and you can usually see them. Usually pretty big. No, that's okay. No, no inserts, red inserts, and no crack on that one. But this is one and two, so uh, we'll look at three and four. And. Uh, See how many cracks are in number three. Ha <laughs> ha.
really coming down out there. Okay, I pulled the cylinder off. You can't see in it very well, but there's some rust in here where it had been sitting for a while. So, uh, also, these are the original um, 80 1300s or whatever they are. Uh, they're not 1600 or 1500 cc cylinders. They're like 83 millimeter, something like that. They're not the 85.5s, I don't think. Maybe they are. Maybe somebody changed them. But uh, it's considerably smaller piston, I believe, than the 85.5. So um, we'll take these off and uh, take the pistons off. Switch to the other side. I made this device, it's just a, uh, carriage bolt, washer, just, I just kind of ground that out, that piece of pipe. Just make your pipe as long as the, as the pin. If you make your pipe as long as the pin, actually mine could be a little bit longer, but it, it works enough, uh, if you're not going to take the pin completely out of the piston, it works just fine. Be interesting to grind that down and look at the top of that and uh, see what it says. So it'll tell you the size. Once you got your block down to this, we you have your cylinders off, your oil cooler off and such, you're going to want to take your oil pump out and um, there's an oil pump puller and there's a case spreader that you're going to use. So you're not using a hammer and a chisel to, uh, to pry the case apart. It's a, it's a case spreader. And I will show you also the secret nut that nobody gets and they booger their case up because they can't get it apart. You want to at least, least loosen the bolts around the oil pump before you attempt to pull it um, because it kind of lets the case loose. These bolts right here, they're special. They've got not nylon little locking deals in them. Keep those separate from the rest.
Sorry. That's for the big oil pump for the new one. That's for the dual port engines. Sorry. I'll have to tap this one out. Kind of tap it out with a with a hammer. But try not to booger the case up. Try don't get in between the case and the and the pump. Just try to tap it out around. Uh, and we're gonna we've got a new pump, so we're gonna use a new pump, not have to worry about the old one. Most of the time when you get water in these cases, it collects at the bottom at the sump, you know, this is upside down, and this gets rotted all out. Uh, water has a detrimental effect uh, to magnesium. It just it just corrodes it really bad. But this is fantastic. It looks beautiful. So I'm very happy about that. Also, when we get into this a little farther, of course I'm going to take our uh, oil pressure relief valve out and clean it out also because we had problems with the other engine. If you have a dual relief case, there's also another one right here. There's one in the front and one in the back. So, and if you take them apart, the springs are different and probably the valves are different. So, you know, if I take this one out, I can just put it in a bag and I know that, you know, I have a single relief case. So, this has a tiny oil pump. Uh, the one I bought is slightly larger. Uh, in volume, I think this is a might be originally a 24. I'm just guessing, and the one I bought was a 28. But it just comes out just a little bit more. It just has a little bit more gear. The gears are just a little bit deeper, and uh, they produce a little bit more oil pressure or a little bit more volume. I guess it wouldn't be pressure, but a little bit more volume. Okay, we're at a point where we can split the case apart. Here's a, sp here's a case splitter. Okay, this goes in your oil pump hole, oil hole. That's why we wanted the oil pump out of it. And it fits, remember the splits right here, so it fits here and you just tighten it up. And we will leave that right there because we have to get all the nuts off the uh, outside of the case. Let me show you the hidden nut. I know it's really grody. Okay, you have your six big bolts, big nuts rather, right here. They're, they're your main, main nuts, okay? But there's also a 13 millimeter head right there and an 8 millimeter stud right there. And there's another one. Oh, secret squirrel! Right there. The other ones are capped and obvious. They're right there. Boy, there's a lot of crud. Like somebody poured oil all over it and went out to the desert and baja this or something. And you know, your normal bolts are, are 
normal nuts are right there. There's not any more hidden ones. These are the hidden ones. This one especially. So a lot of people forget it. A lot of people don't see it because there's so much spooge on the case. And they end up doing terrible things to their case. Double check your, make sure all your nuts are off. It's an amazing that the tools that you buy for a Volkswagen uh, are operated with standard wrenches. I forgot something. Ah, they still fell out anyways. Okay, there you go. Cam bearings are one of the last things that get oiled. So if they get coppered, and they're not, they're still in pretty good shape. That one is anyway. Not bad. Yeah, that'll go again. I'm most interested in about that bearing right there. Let's have a look at that. Let's pull this crank out and put that bearing. Have a look at that bearing.
Okay. You seeing what I'm seeing? Oh my god, it's broke right in half. Look at that. <laughs> this is broke right in half. That bearing's broke right in half. Holy crap. Okay. Yeah. What happened there? I don't know. I don't know. I wonder what it did to the crank. Yeah, really pounding. Really pounding. Yeah. This one kept it in check, though. <laughs> Broken half. It's in two pieces. <laughs> Here's, here's our Walker Texas Ranger. See that? See that right there? That pin? Now, look at the pin in the case. Let's have a look at the pin in the case. Let's see if I can get you to be able to see it. Let's get up a little closer. Focus. Focus. Come on. Focus. I guess it won't focus. Yeah, back it up a little bit. See if it will focus. Focus. There you go. If you look at the pin, the pin's not bent or messed up any. It doesn't look too bad. So it's highly possible we can uh, put bearings on this. Let's have a look at our crank where that bearing was really cooked. It's amazing, it is the crank is not damaged. It's just amazing that bearing took all that. It's amazing. Well, the crank and the cam are fine. However, <laughs> here's my new main bearing, and it's supposed to fit in there nice and tight. And if you notice, there's about 10 thousandths play or more, 15 or something. Okay, when I put the new bearing in there, let me put this up really quick so it doesn't get damaged. And if you look at uh, the saddle here, you can feel the ridge, and you can see the pin. See how loose that pin is? Okay, so that shouldn't be loose like that either. Now, what can be done? Well, you know, what can be done? take it to a shop and have it, you know, line board and uh, have the have it resurfaced and line board. Uh, but I don't know who does that and that's lots of money. So probably what we're going to do, I might make some, I might make some inquiries, but I doubt it. I think this car is going to get this engine, except I'm going to put my Molly pistons in it, cylinders, uh, the other cylinder heads, and my cam and crank from this engine over here in this, in this case. I'm going to try to use this case. Okay, well there's the teardown and there's the uh, 
there's the uh, opinion. That's uh, that case ain't gonna work unless you take and well, it'll work, but for how long? You know, and that walking back and forth like that, you'll have a rear main going out, and you'll have oil oil pouring out of it pretty quick. So we'll use the guts out of this one and put it in that Auto Lena case, and hopefully the the crank gear and the cam gear are going to mesh right, not make too much noise if that's what's wrong with it. Yeah. So okay, there you go. I want to get this one on the nut. Thanks for wrenching with me. I got a god awful mess here to clean up. <laughs> See you guys later.